Hello everyone, welcome to another video on my second channel, GeoGuessr Explained. Today I have a comprehensive guide to the country of Malaysia. So I and a few others have been doing extensive research into Malaysia and we've come up with a 40 page document here all about how exactly you should get more accurate guesses in Malaysia. I have so many metas to share with you today, including the fact that I've solved the black sticker metas. So we have a bunch of different metas to do with what they write on the typical black stickers in Malaysia on their polls. So that's gonna be happening today. First off, let's take a look at Malaysia. Malaysia is obviously a pretty tropical country, very green, has pretty extensive coverage. So you can see the country, uh, coverage on the mainland is pretty extensive here. I mean, some states like Kuala Lumpur getting more and some states like Pahang pretty uh, sparse, but then you have to remember not many people actually live in here anyway. So yeah, um, there you go, uh, that's how it works. And then over on Borneo, of course, that's the second part of Malaysia. And yeah, you have relatively sparse like coverage here, only two main roads covered uh, on this part of Malaysia, there's, there's not much coverage or no coverage on the interior, which would be cool, but I don't even know how many roads actually lead there. Um, and then you have your yeah, pretty extensive coverage over here. So that is pretty much how it works with Malaysia in terms of coverage. So let's get straight into talking about uh, these metas, which we've discovered. So here are, how, here are the contents. You can obviously find the uh, link for this in the description. Feel free to share uh, it with other people and screenshot anything from here. It's all open for everyone to use and do suggest me anything if you also have a tip for me. But uh, first things first, we have the state flags just on the cover uh, on the cover sheet here. So um, state flags are quite important in Malaysia because uh, they're quite proud in each state. They have quite a, an identity in different states, and the yeah they they do like definitely use motifs from their flag as well quite often. So for example, Sarawak, Sabah, they're the two biggest states over in uh, in or the the two states which you find on Borneo. It's definitely worth learning those two flags. Um, and then Johor, the biggest state down south here, that is also very much worth learning. And then Palau, I mean, which is which is Penang, is uh, very very worth learning as well. Sometimes you see Selangor and sometimes others as well. But yeah, they're the most um, common. Also, when you're navigating this document, look for this uh, like flower thing, which I've placed everywhere where I really think the tip is worth learning or is going to be high yield. Because obviously some metas are smaller and I'll generally try and take you through that when we're looking today. Okay, so let's move through to the general tips. Firstly, there's the Plunkett doc, which I'll also link in the description. Pretty good for just the basic tips um, once what, for recognizing that you're in Malaysia. But now we're going to be using this for region guessing. So this is the most common lamp post uh, that you're going to find on Malaysian poles. It's got two circles in it. First First things first, that should only be in Malaysia, so that's quite useful. And then also, I've only ever seen it once on Borneo, so it should almost always be inside uh, the mainland Malaysia, which as you can see here is, is this. So I'm gonna say mainland, that means this throughout the document. Okay, then we also have bollards. Bollards are most common on the peninsula. You can see them in both Sarawak and uh, Cebu, but yeah. Also, I'm gonna be talking about state names a lot here. Definitely worth just like uh, keeping them in mind. Open up a map, uh, maybe on the side, just so you can remember where these are. Uh, but yeah, there's like 13 states in total or something. I don't know, some, in, some number like that. And you, most of them are uh, located on the mainland. Okay, uh, then we have this one with a sheet under it, underneath it. Uh, I would say that's 95% found on the peninsula. Definitely more common on Borneo as as well compared to the uh, to compared to the mainland. This, uh, I, I, I dare say it is slightly more common in the north northern states than in the southern states on the peninsula, um, but I wouldn't really use it. It's just worth knowing so that you can uh, use it for toss-ups between uh, Borneo and uh, the mainland. Okay, uh, moving on to some Borneo lampposts here. We have this really thin one, which is looking pretty generic. Now that is most common in, in Sabah, and uh, we have this one with the like boomerang on it, and this one is really common in Sarawak. All over, in every city in Sarawak, you can find these. Probably less common in the main city, uh, which is Kuching. Now, one, one more thing I want to mention before we go on here is that it looks like this one is called Sarawak. And actually, that's the state name. As you can see, it doesn't have like a little circle next to it to denote that it's a city. So if you zoom in here, then you can actually see it's Kuching. That's the name of the city. And that's actually the case for many states here where you think this is this city is called Pahang, but actually, no, it's called, uh, what's it called? <laughs> yeah, actually, sometimes it's really hard to find, but there it is, it's Kuantan. So uh, still, I don't know all the names of the cities because they're actually obscured. And so if you open up Bing Maps, you can see the normal names. So maybe that's even the way to go uh, because I often do talk about the city names as well here. But yeah, there you go. That's the boomerang and that's found in Sarawak State. So obviously it's still a big area, but you can really narrow it down um, the, where in the country you are by, by looking for that. 
Um, in the capital city of Sabah, Kota Kina Kinabalu, you can find this support beam on most of the lamps, which is quite useful. Uh, Tawau also has a similar lamp to the Sarawak. It's not really uh, boomerang shaped this time. It's got a little bit of a lip underneath, and that's in Tawau, which is one of the bigger cities over here. Um, okay, then pole meters. This one's super useful, so pay attention. We do, have, as you can see, it's got the uh, flower next to it. We do have square poles that kind of look like tie poles, but they're a bit thinner in Sarawak. They're all over Sarawak State, and they often have a white sticker which we'll talk about later and that one is just very very useful to note then we have the sabah uh, pole which can be found elsewhere this one's not as exclusive as this one but this one uh has like three levels of thickness to it and it's very uh, common uh, to see in sabah i would say i would say definitely lean there if you see it although it can be found on the mainland as well and then we have chili poles which are mostly on ca in capital cities on the peninsula they've got like the uh, kind of indent here uh, it's pretty useful to know okay moving on here we have borneo uh using thin poles generally speaking or not generally speaking but a lot of the time. If you see a particularly thin concrete pole, then consider um, Borneo rather than mainland. You can see them in mainland perhaps, but uh, yeah, definitely a, quite a Borneo thing. And sometimes they're a little bit thicker, sometimes they're really quite thin, but yeah, I'll definitely consider that. Um, then we have to say on Borneo, there's a lot of different pole markings that aren't the black sticker. So you can have little black stickers or something similar to what we have over on the mainland, but then sometimes you see white ones like this, green ones like this, and then sometimes just black text on the pole. So it's quite useful to know all those. Um, and don't think just because you see something like this um, that you're going to be somewhere on the mainland because that's not necessarily the case. Okay, so talking about those white stickers, these are the ones that you always find on the uh, square poles. Or well, not always, but most times you have one of those square tie poles like this one, you're going to see this white sticker. And so this T4 at the, at the top is actually really useful because you have these different... Um, you have this, uh, these different zones that you can see in, in the state of Sarawak uh, where they can be. So if you're in T4, that's going to be somewhere in the light blue zone here, so just west of Brunei. Um, and it's really useful to know uh, these ones. Um, just remember that two is here and eight is here. So it starts off making sense with those two, but then everything between is kind of mixed up. So you have to learn that it goes four and then seven. Yeah, and then three, and then uh, six, and then five. So yeah, kind of uh, not particularly logical, you could say, but uh, definitely worth knowing because you can get really close guesses if you know it. Okay, a bit of a niche one, but there's this camera glitch with the pink, uh, pink uh, like uh, purple um, pixels, and that can be found west of Kuching, which, uh, as I said, is the capital city of Sarawak. Then we also have this like a uh, big smudge, which is pretty rare, but you can also find that east of uh, Sarawak uh, city, so Kuching. Um, then we also have like a camera haze, which is most common in uh, Kuching. If you know how to use that kind of thing, it's more of an advanced thing. If you know how to use it, definitely c keep an eye out for it. Otherwise, uh, don't really worry about that. Okay, uh, black car. We'll talk about this more later, but black car is definitely more common on the peninsula, but uh, you can see it. You can't see it. The most important thing is you can't see it ever in Sabah. The state of Sabah has no black car, so that is 100% a white car state in Generation 3. And then as for Generation 4, we're going to talk a bit more about this, but they have four Generation 4 colors. The black car, the brown car, which looks like this, um, the white car, which looks like this, um, which has blue and then white on either side, so it really looks blue, and then there's the pure blue car. So keep those in mind. We'll talk about those soon as well. Okay, larger camera rifts are found in the state of Kedar. Um, they can also be found, generally speaking, in the northwest as well, but definitely most common when you see bigger ones to guess Kedar. And normally they're to the west of you, so that's also somewhat helpful. Um, because it like maps onto the camera. So yeah, I don't know if that, if that makes a whole lot of sense, but yeah. Okay, next up we're talking generation four. How much generation four does each state have? In Perlis, you have a lot of generation four, whereas Keda has very little. So that's a great thing for the, for the toss up between those two states. Um, all of these states at least have some. Um, so for example, Pahang and uh, Terengganu, they both have like around 20%, 25%. Um, and then like these states over here, looking more like half and half or a little bit more. So yeah, um, that's definitely worth well, to note, uh, generally speaking, the pattern here is that the West Coast has more than the East Coast, that's for sure. Okay, then we're talking about most common car color. I've got a breakdown here if you want to know it, uh, but generally speaking, black cars more common in the North, so is white car. They have more alternative car colors in the North of the country, and then blue car is more common in the South, but then uh, a lot of these states have a strong combinations, so you can see what the actual combinations are like over here. Um, it's also worth noting that uh, these two states, uh, Perlis, they don't have any uh, they have no white car and they and rarely have brown car as well. So yeah, um, that is worthwhile to know. Okay. 
Um, here we are with the most common car color in Generation 3. So we're just talking about the Generation 4 color. This is Generation 3. And so in Generation 3, the white car is much more common in the north. The black car is much more common in the south. Same thing applies for uh, Borneo, where you can see a strong mix of uh, things in uh, Sarawak, whereas in Sabah, as I said, 100%. Also, Malacca is worth knowing, this little state right here, because that is 95% black car. So really? Uh, so small sample size that we tested with, but yeah, you can you can be pretty confident to send black car on that one, that's for sure. Uh, whereas, you know, the surrounding states all have it, but not quite as commonly. Okay, other metas, let's take a look here. Blue barrels on the state of, on the uh, island and state of Labuan here. So it's a federal territory, this state. Um, it has a little bit of coverage here, definitely well covered, all things considered. And that one has blue barrels lying everywhere. So they're kind of bins, I don't know if it's bins or water collection, probably bins, um, but they use those all around and they're really useful actually. You can see them elsewhere keep it in mind, but uh, if you see an abundance of them, definitely consider Lab 1 Island. Okay, then we also have Chevrons here. Chevrons, this is just forgetting the country, they don't actually d differ regionally, but they have a black outline. So I think Indonesia uses the same ones, but Thailand doesn't. So if you're ever in a 50-50, which is possible, especially if you're playing like NMPZ, then look for the black outline. You should be able to uh, send uh, Malaysia instead. Oil palms are obviously everywhere in um, in Malaysia. Rest in peace to the orangutans. But uh, yeah, they're definitely kind of uh, concentrated in um, Johor and Penang, uh, or Pahang, sorry. And then, yeah, in in kind of Western um, Perak as well. So those three states, those three areas are the most you can see. Uh, and then definitely Sabah actually growing a whole lot in the east. And then Sarawak kind of growing more in the north. So yeah, I mean, like you can use these very well, um, especially because a lot of, there's a lot of coverage in Johor and Pahang where they have those uh, plantations. So could be a general meta to send more kind of Southern here, more kind of Northern here, but yeah, just keep it in mind and uh, yeah. Okay, so next one here is the uh, elevation, which I think is very much worth knowing. Johor is pretty flat down the South there. Um, this coast is very flat. And then generally speaking, all inside here, you get a lot of generation four mountain coverage, especially in Perak and stuff like that. For example, the capital city of Perak, Ipo, um, is like inside the mountains and you can pretty much get the city based on that. So it's pretty useful. Um, Pe Pe Penang is also pretty mountainous there. So yeah, good stuff to keep in mind. That's for sure. And then you get some kind of random mountains up here in the far Northwest. If you like have a flat landscape and like a jutting up mountain, like Thailand style, then that's what you should guess for sure. Uh, faded lines are somewhat more common on Borneo. This is this one I heard someone say that Ning says this. Um, well, I, I think it is true, but uh, definitely use with caution. It's not uh, a proper meta. Okay. Here we go for a really big meta, which uh, Quickie discovered while he was looking through these. Um, it is that we have the uh, postcodes written on a lot of these uh, street signs. Now, postcodes are actually particularly useful because if this is legible, and if you have a vague idea of this map, which kind of goes 0, 1, 2, um, 3, 4, uh, around the capital, and then uh, 5 is also capital, and 6 is also around there, 7, 8, um, and then 8 and 9 all in Borneo, uh, then you can use these street signs, use these postcodes to get really accurate guesses. It's, it's actually really good, not to mention that we have these unique um, signs. So yeah, I mean, it's it's worthwhile to learn this, um, and it's the first two digits. So 7 0 is this one in Semberan, uh, and that is going to be, oh, yeah, yeah, in Semberan, that's going to be somewhere around here, and it actually has the uh, city name as well. So Semberan is the city name, Shah Alam is the city name, Johor, um, is the city name, and Baru is like a big part of Johor as well, I think. So yeah, um, and it says postcode as well. That's how you know you're dealing with the right thing. But it should be pretty common, not on all street signs, of course, but on some. Okay, um, and then we have um, some the, of these petrol stations, Petronas, and they always have the city name or, or written out, or most times they'll have some kind of the city name. So Skudai here is the city name, and uh, yeah, there's often one of those signs around there. So it's particularly for moving games, um, do keep that in mind. Okay, now we're gonna talk about black stickers, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'll try and run through this pretty quickly because there's a lot and uh, it's probably better for you to do it in your own time, but I'll try and provide some uh, some useful uh, like tidbits here. So red and blue paint is this stuff here that you can find on uh, on uh, poles. It's often inside the black box. Sometimes it's outside as well. And uh, yeah, you can see it often without it as well. So generally speaking, it's quite common on the West Coast. Um, and especially kind of central. And the main thing here I would say is that uh, Parak, which can often look like it's neighboring states, Parak actually has quite a lot of um, of that red and blue um, paint job, whereas the neighboring states not, don't have nearly as much, even Pahang, quite, quite a bit rarer than in Parak. So definitely keep that in mind. Now also, 
Drew caution is advised because some of these were done on relatively low sample sizes, maybe like 20 each, so um, for each date. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's not nothing. Um, maybe tw so yeah, between 15 and 30 for each day, I would say. So keep that in mind, but uh, I think these patterns should be relatively correct. And then keep in mind that Malika, uh, Malika as we'll discover, is the easiest state because it has a very defined pattern. So you can almost always see that there, and most times around here, K KL has a lot of it as well, um, whereas Joho has less, so that's that's really something. Um, moving over to here, we have the phone number. So this is where you have the phone number written at the bottom. That is particularly common in the southern states. So again, Malika is always using it, um, almost always using it. Joho almost always uses it, and pa pa Pahang almost always uses it. Pahang's particularly useful because that's a very toss-up state, but keep an eye out for that because that can be really useful for guessing there. I mean, obviously a lot of the surrounding states do have it, so, um, but again, it's good for the Perak, uh, Pahang toss up. Um, and then light bulb, which is this thing here. I don't know if it's actually light bulb, I think it is, but regardless, um, that is more common in certain states. Again, Malaka, so all three of them Malaka has, um, and then quite common in Perlis, which is, um, I'm, I'm actually not so sure about this, but it's definitely just a distinctive design in Perlis, so that's, that's very good to know. I would say maybe, I would probably downgraded to it sometimes after a bit further research, but yeah, definitely common there. Um, and then yeah, common around KL, common in Malika, and then kind of less common elsewhere. Okay, worth keeping in mind. Tell T and B, this is perhaps the most useful one, even though it's only in one state. So Johor is a pretty big state. Most of the state will say tell T and B instead of just normal tell. So uh, yeah, keep that in mind. Tell T and B, go something, go something, go pretty useful. Uh, okay, the characters in the first line. So, um, it, basically what this means is that, uh, oh, oh, characters in first line. Yeah, yeah. Basically what it means is like, we've got the first line here. This one has one, two, three, four. This one has one, two, three. That's pretty, pretty much what it means here. So, um, uh, and I just want to check I'm recording properly here. Yep, we're recording. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Okay, um, basic, basically here, um, the point is that certain places are more likely to have more letters at the start. Um, for example, big cities tend to have a lot of the time two only, um, whereas the other states tend to have three. So Johor, KL area, Penang area often only have two letters in the first line. Um, not that actually, not actually that useful, but worth keeping in mind um, if you see a two letter one. Uh, the rest of it's kind of a bit more arbitrary, but um, Melika, again, almost always has four, so that's kind of unique about it as well. Okay, moving on. Letters after line one. This one's actually useful. So unlike the last one, this one I would definitely use. So the second line can often have letters in it. On Malika, for example, here you almost never have a line in the second in the second uh, in the second line. It's almost always moved on to on to numbers. Whereas on this one, we can see SW three ABC. So that's line it's letters. Sorry, on the on the second line. Very useful. Uh, more of a North States thing. More of a rural states thing as well. Uh, so these three here all using it very commonly. Parax more of a sometimes, and then Northwest is very commonly as well. Uh, Nagari Sembalan is one of those states that bucks the trend a lot, so it's a bit of an annoying state. So you have to consider kind of this band here, this band here when you see that, Johor, KL, not really using letters after line one so often. Uh, numbers after, uh, number of lines. Number of lines, again, is not that useful, uh, but generally speaking, less lines the further south you go. Yeah, I mean, it is relatively useful, but uh, I would just use it as kind of a south versus north meta. Um, dividing line, whether whether like divided houses have a, uh, a diagonal one or like a horizontal line. Um, the good thing to know is that horizontal lines are basically, if you see only horizontal lines or, you know, it's just a really strong thing for up here, but then all these states can also use either. So um, yeah, not the most useful thing, but worth keeping in mind that uh, you should only see the horizontal ones here. So if you see a diagonal one, consider not sending there. Okay, uh, then we are looking at likelihood that the uh, street name starts with a, or that the, that the, uh, First letter is a J on the black sticker. Um, just generally common in big cities because that means Jalan and or Yalan. I don't know how to pronounce it, but that is the uh, the Malaysian way to say street. And for whatever reason, in cities they definitely put that on like a lot of the poles. Whereas in countryside, it's much less common. So if you see J, consider a big city. Obviously, you'll see that you're in a big city probably, but uh, even the surrounding areas can have a lot of like J starting ones. So kind of useful. Okay, highest yield. Basically, we've got the Malacca stickers, which have like often a Times New Roman font and they have 
also this kind of uh, like telephone number with like two white codes above it and they almost always have the like the uh, colors within it and the light bulb within it as well and they're put higher on the pole. Doesn't always work but yeah you can see it's kind of a square one higher on the pole than what is normal. Uh, Kellen Tun, I haven't mentioned this yet but Kellen Tun often has a smaller font. This one's clearly smaller than, than other fonts like you can see this one's also kind of a smaller one but this smaller font is also has no gaps in it so if you have this smaller font with no gaps definitely a good Kalantan meta. Um, Kalantan and Parak, which are these two in case you're wondering, uh, over here, Kalantan is this one and Parak is this one. They often have like a kind of a letter spam where they just kind of use many more letters than other states, but that's kind of fake. So don't rely on it too much. Perlis, not always, but often has these really long black stickers. And it also often has the light bulb plain without any red and blue paint. So that's also, they're two really good metas for getting Perlis. Obviously also often has the telephone number as well. And often, well, it should also have the letter on the second line and sometimes on the third and the fourth line, but you know, that's how it works. So basically um, good to keep in mind. Okay, um, Johor, as I mentioned, often starting with J, we can see that mention of here, that here, but we also have Tel B, which I've mentioned. Also, the other clue for Johor is that it often has telephone number written underneath the black sticker, so you can have a smaller black sticker or just some other black sticker with the telephone written underneath. You can see that in other states, most common in Johor, pretty good Johor meta, I would say. Okay, moving on, then we have Parak. So Parak is again, like the most likely to have letter spam and also the most likely to have 11 KV, which I'm, I'm assuming is talking about volts um, on the first line. Now, if you see this kind of thing in Parak, um, then, uh, or if you see this kind of thing, um, don't count that as the first line, count this one as the first line because this is just, you know, some other information. So uh, also this like kind of like sticker with the uh, red and blue on the bottom is like part of like, it's definitely instead of a paint job, it's definitely a sticker here. That's pretty common in Parak in the city. So I would say that's also a pretty good meta. So then I have some like city, um, like some state specific hints here. You can take a look at this yourself. Um, but regardless, it's good to talk about bins and street signs. Uh, so bins uh, here have a bright green lid and this kind of flower design or butterfly design. Uh, that's really common in these three states here. So we'll see that soon. Um, and so yeah, that's Perlis. Uh, with the bright green lid. Um, you can see that it's all over the north you get the bright green lid. And then we also have this unique uh, street sign. This is like only found in these two states. So yeah, it's kind of looking very fancy, often has some Arabic on it. Uh, yeah, good. Okay, Kedar, similar story here. We have most commonly that same uh, butterfly design bin. We have a similar looking uh, street sign here. Again, often having Arabic. And uh, they, uh, yeah, that's about all to say there. Uh, Kelantan, so they don't have proper bins. They normally just have like black kind of uh, generic bins there, which is quite useful. Normally Terengganu and Kelantan are the only two states where you see a high density of that on the mainland, I would say. Um, so yeah, pretty useful. Uh, they are mixed state in terms of street signs. They're mo mostly mounted to the ground and they mostly have Arabic first, um, but they, yeah, they tend to use a bit of blue and a bit of green. Maybe green's more common, which is useful because there aren't that many green signs on, on the mainland, but yeah. And then also you can see their state's logo on street signs sometimes. And that's actually, I've used that before, so it is actually useful. Um, Penang Island, so we're talking about over here. Line the flag. Uh, this street, street light, which if you're an Australian player, kind of looks like the Darwin one, uh, where it's like kind of makes an angle like that. I don't know if it actually looks that much like it. Often always also has these uh, support bars. That's only found in Penang and it's really common. So if you're in the city and you see one of these, definitely send there. They have green street signs on the island. Uh, they often paint their poles blue and yellow shouts to live to for that one. Um, and uh, yeah, they often have these really thin bins, but yeah, I don't really use bin meta too much there. I uh, try and use landscape and kind of put everything together together. Um, but yeah, that's a that's one zero um, area code as well, if you can remember. And a bit of Chinese on the uh, street signs quite commonly, I would say. So yeah. Uh, then we're on Penang Mainland. Penang Mainland, yeah, green street signs here. Um, again, learn the flag, kind of random bins. Don't really worry too much about that. Okay, Parak here, bigger state now. Let's uh, focus on this. So green street signs, that that's like the most iconic green street sign state because the rest further south don't really have many at all. Um, and so, yeah, again, we have the green, we have the bright green lid. So these, these three states using it, but this in Parak, it's less common. In Parak, you can see like generic bins as well. So it's kind of more mixed state. Um, and uh, yeah, don't worry, I've got like a ways to summarize all this very soon, so keep that in mind. Uh, yeah, here we have Terengganu. Terengganu using blue street signs, generally speaking. Um, yeah, it can, be, it can be mounted in a number of different ways. They often also have Arabic. It's more of a Northern States thing to see Arabic on the street signs, I would say. Um, and then they have like also generic bins. This time blue is more common 
or not more common, but more common than in Kelantan. Um, so yeah, state flag as well. There we go. Pahang, big state, so that's worth knowing. Uh, so they also have the bright green lids, but they have a different design. So they don't have the butterfly design, they have this like scene with like a circle, so that's very useful. Uh, blue street signs in that in that uh, state, kind of mixed here. Um, and yeah, that's about all there is to say. Okay, Selangor. Uh, Selangor is around uh, Kuala Lumpur, uh, and uh, they, okay, it's very important to stop here and pay attention. So they have all kinds of street signs, all kinds. I think the street signs are generally mounted on a post, though. That's probably most common in KL. But they have all kinds of street signs, and all the bins I've mentioned so far, and all the bins I'm, I'm still going to mention, are possible to see in Selangor uh, and Kuala Lumpur for whatever reason. I don't know why that is, um, but yeah, keep it in mind because that whole area just does whatever they want. So always bear in mind that whatever you see can be in KL area. Don't know why, but. Uh, I will say that KL bins are often orange, and that you wouldn't really see elsewhere. So I think that's a good meta, but apart from that, don't really trust anything too much, um, because, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Okay, and then also um, the capital district, which is Putrajaya, that has these street signs, which are different between generation three and four. If you're going for state streaks, it's worth knowing, otherwise probably not really worth knowing. Okay, uh, Negeri Sembilan. Here we have the first state with southern bins. So southern bins are gray instead. Very useful, very, very useful. And it has a dark green lid. Combine this then with the street signs, which are always white. And they always have like some kind of red text with the city name on it. Very useful stuff, guys. Um, yeah, so just keep that in mind. Southern bins plus the white street signs, very useful indeed. Uh, Malacca, uh, so there we have the, uh, we have mixed uh, street signs, white and blue here. Um, we have the southern bin. And then just look for the pulse because the pulse, this is the most useful one, as I've told you guys before, kind of different, different looking uh, font here. So you just go for that. Um, okay, uh, Johor, then we're looking at the southmost state here now, southern bins again, and the iconic yellow street signs, which are super useful. Um, and then the state flag as well. So using those three, you should be able to get it in a urban context, not to mention the tel TNB. So Johor is uh, like, has so many clues. It gets less consistent when you get to the north of the state, especially with the black sticker stuff, but yeah, okay. Sarawak, now we're moving on to Sarawak. Obviously no black stickers here, so I'm, I kind of just spammed a bunch of metas, but uh, let's take a look. Okay, so this is the uh, typical Sarawak bin color. It's kind of a lighter green rather than what we see in Sabah. They have often in Kuching, this uh, like Sarawak logo, you can see it elsewhere as well. It's got a little figure um, like he's got like standing like that uh, of obviously iconic flag as well and this is the kind of typical street um, uh, what do you call them traffic lights with the holes in it that are most common all over the place in Sarawak so keep that in mind very very useful stuff indeed and uh, you can see that all over the state of Sarawak um, and they're slightly different between cities as well so you, this general design keep it in mind but I do think there are different like different sizes of the holes and stuff like that so worth keeping in mind okay now we're going to go by city. Obviously, all the uh, street signs in Sarawak and in Sabah are green. So we have to look at design here a bit more closely. Okay, so we have here uh, a rounded street sign. Um, and that one is most common in Kuching. If you see that, you can pretty be pretty much be confident. But they use a whole bunch of different ones in Kuching as well. The Cebu ones are often on the ground. It seems like most times, apart from this one, most of these are mounted to the ground. And they have Chinese, apparently, most times here. That's what I'm just noticing as I'm looking at this. Cebu often also... I'm going to come back to the sign backs, by the way. But Cebu often also has um, this, um, this kind of uh, gr green sticker um, with SB on it. That stands for Cebu, so it's pretty easy to remember remember. And then um, SMC probably start, stands for Cebu. I could be wrong about that, but I think if you see SMC, then consider Cebu, definitely. Uh, Bintalu, sometimes this is Ecuadorian ballads at intersections, so that's kind of something. A BDA, definitely Bintalu, uh, B stands for Bintalu there. And so if, you, if you've forgotten quickly, we're talking about these cities. So we started in Sarawak, which is Kuching, then Cebu, now Bintalu, and we're going to talk about Miri next. Um, and so they, they also have this like kind of arch, which you might, might see through a blur, and that one's also it seems to be used unique to Bintaloo. Bintaloo is also quite varied in terms of street signs, can be either mounted to the ground or like a, a normal street sign. And uh, yeah, they often have these green stickers on like kind of metal poles as well. So keep it in mind, it says B as well. So S and B, you can tell it apart that way. Okay, Miri, we have these kind of more unique looking street signs. They're kind of similar to uh, one we saw here and here, but these ones are kind of, they don't have the white bit at the end. So, you know, it's kind of, it, it can definitely be told apart. It's a very generic font as well. I would say like, if you see these ones, definitely keep that in mind. And we're gonna talk about more about the sign backs, but diamond sign back is Miri. Um, you can find that on the mainland, but if you're talking about Borneo, then only in Miri. And they have these bins, uh, 
I think Miri bins are the least useful, but yeah, should just be kind of look like they often have this design on the front. That's for sure. Um, yeah. Okay. Moving on to Sabah. Okay, in Sabah, you again have these green street signs. Now, in every Sabah city, you can see hanging green street signs, which you would not see um, ordinarily in uh, Sarawak. So that's quite a useful uh, tip for Sabah. If you have three guesses, if you're on Team Jewels, then you can see it. send one to each of the major cities and you should get it right. Uh, this little blue ball I saw around a bit, but uh, yeah, don't think it's that useful. Uh, and then, so in uh, Sabah, in Kota Kinabalu, which is what we're talking about right now, that city, the capital city, um, uh, which is the biggest, so if you're still confused, like it says Sabah here, but if you zoom in, it says Kota Kinabalu, okay? Um, these ones almost never use striped um, signs, signposts, like they almost always have in Sabah, I mean, in, in Sarawak, sorry, and on the mainland. But this is the state where you're least likely to see it. Now, you can still see it, but you often don't. And it's kind of painted light blue as well on the back of the sign. And they have two stripes like this. So um, we'll see that kind of later as well. Um, um, they have darker green bins in Sabah, but then you can also see like random ones. Um, in terms of roofs, I think you see more uh, metal roofs the further east you go in the country, just generally. Um, but uh, I wouldn't use that too much. They often have blue uh, water tanks I found, but again, not that useful. Um, Lab One, I found, does sometimes have these really thick center road lines. Like you can't really tell from this image, but they're abnormally thick. Obviously, have to remember those blue barrels. Um, it says Lab 1, LBN on the uh, pole sometimes. Then they also have kind of white pole markings, yellow ones, blue ones. Um, definitely definitely a learnable place if you wanted to put the time in. But uh, yeah, just use the barrels and um, and the kind of LBN, then you should be good. Um, okay, Sundakan, uh, we have the hanging uh, street signs pretty much every time here. Sundakan, a great metaphor there is that we have concrete roads a lot of the time. It's the place in Malaysia with the most concrete roads. So we're talking about Sundakan, which is over here, uh, right, this city here, and definitely consider concrete roads there. This tree is definitely more common in uh, Sabah than elsewhere in Malaysia, but I actually think you can find it pretty much anywhere in Malaysia at a higher altitude. So just remembering that Sabah is a really mountainous uh, state is worthwhile here. Um, and then, yeah, we, no we do normally have striped posts in Sundakan, and we have this orange stripe sometimes we have generic bins as well as like yeah kind of generic green ones as well um, and they sometimes have these like fake looking tiles but uh, wouldn't use that at all ditches again like that's a definitely a sub thing but you can see it anywhere in the country so yeah use these like a lot of like fake matters included here um to wow this is like a work in progress but I saw discs on the uh, on the um, kind of um, on the uh, insulators here quite commonly. And if you didn't know, this is the subar pole top when it has two crossbars and it has like a uh, kind of diagonal thing. That's included in the Plunkett dock, but definitely worth knowing. Like if you don't know that, that's that's essential knowledge. Um, then they again kind of uh, go against the trend of striped poles. They don't really have it. And uh, they do have these like kind of silver things that say Tawau, um, and that's really useful. Uh, also like a, a quite a bit of red dirt showing up there. And again, pretty generic bins. Okay, moving on here. Uh, then we have like a few more two-hour meters. Sometimes I just have it at Britain in black. Uh, this pole top, I don't know, I was just looking at it. Red street light. Again, don't think these are super useful, but keep them in mind. Okay, region guessing using street signs and bins. So this is compiling compiling all the states. So mixed, I kind of chose poor colors here, but I can't go back and edit it. But um, if you want to remake this map for me, you can. But mixed doesn't mean blue or white. It just means mixed, okay? It just could be anything. Um, yellow is Johor. Very useful, okay? White, uh, Negeri Sembilan, uh, blue kind of all over the place, uh, Perak and Penang using green as well as, uh, as well as Kalantan, um, and then KL using anything. Okay. Very useful. These ones are also mounted to the ground. So that's also useful. Uh, Sabah and, uh, Sarawak being completely green. Keep it in mind. Okay. Bins. I have mentioned how important they are, uh, cause bins are relatively common to see. Remember the green. So the light green here means you got that bright green lid. Um, and then in the South, we got the gray bins and then up here, we've mostly got the black generic bins. So that's how you can separate the three. Obviously black generic bins can be pretty much seen everywhere. That uh, same applies for over on over here, but yeah, dark green is quite commonly in Sabah. Yeah, it's it's it could be pretty fake, but uh, I'd keep it in mind regardless. Um, okay, traffic lights, uh, border traffic lights. Uh, they normally they normally like uh, yellow or orange. Don't really know why or what the reason is for each color, but you can definitely see those uh, in the northern states much more. Well, I don't really think you can see them down here. The colored border, um, so that's keep, that's great to keep in mind. Uh, very common in uh, Perlis and in Pahang. And now, really usefully, is the striped posts on the uh, traffic lights. Obviously, you don't. There's not that many 
any intersections with the trap alliance in Malaysia. But when you see them, um, Nigeri Sembalan, I mean, uh, sorry, Terengganu here, often, often, often has these. In fact, pretty much every time. And uh, they're, all, they're almost always orange rather than yellow as well there. And then they have like these different other colors. Uh, they, not other colors. They, ha they also have these in other states. Um, very common in Malacca as well, making it even easier. Like if you're in South and you see that, very useful. Um, and then yeah, these Northern states using it as well. Pahang uses the uh, border very commonly, but doesn't have the uh, striped ones much at all, so that's common, or good to know. And then obviously we touched on the uh, Saramac ones, which are always present, or just about always present on in Saramac cities. Okay, now, back at the signpost, let's talk about this quickly, very useful, and I can't believe I discovered this, I don't even know how I discovered it, I just looked at the diamond, I was like, I haven't seen that before. This is super useful for, for uh, Borneo. So, uh, for mainland, disregard it. There are some fake matters, but don't really regard it just yet. I'm still working on that. If you want to help me research any of this stuff, you can. Um, in Kuching, down the bottom here, in that main city, we have either no support beams or two support beams like you'd see in Sabah. So that's useful. And they're also kind of often like, like a bit droopy and a bit thin. Um, and obviously you have the striped pole, which is which you don't have in Kota Kinabalu. Um, then the next city up, which is Cebu, uh, you have the lower crossbar here, which can be normal like this one, but most times is low. Then on the next one up, which is uh, Bintalu, I want to say. Yeah, Bintalu. Um, that one has the middle crossbar. And then in uh, Miri, yeah, in Miri, you have the diamond. Uh, so this kind of applies for the general areas around it as well, though sometimes in in, in the outback in the middle of nowhere you can just see the, the generic uh, style. And also, like I would say, Kuching has this kind of green sign back like they have up here, but a bit greener um, quite commonly, whereas I don't think these cities would really see that so much. So actually pretty useful, and you know, you see signs everywhere, so definitely keep that in mind. Then you have the generic two stripes in uh, all around this state of Sabah, uh, where, and they can be a bit 3D and a bit like chunky like that, so keep that in mind as well. Uh, but yeah, that actually works pretty well, guys. I, I would say it's like pretty much 95% effective in most cities, so keep it in mind. Kind of nice, guys. Am I, am, I, am I lying to you guys? No, 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 that's a good one. Okay, extras. Um, more fake minutes and stuff to round out the video here. So, uh, Surabaya pavement, I mean like, like kind of cross-hatched, uh, tiled pavement, not tiled, uh, Bricked pavement um, is quite common in Kelantan, in the capital, I would say. So, uh, probably fake, but keep it in mind. I saw it a few times. Uh, Perlis signbacks are kind of similar to uh, the ones you see in Miri. So, yeah, I mean, not always, though. So, Perlis, uh, a bit of a fake matter. Keep it in mind. I've used it once, and it worked, but other times, I think I've been thrown by it. So, yeah, keep it in mind. Out of Ashes, don't really think that's real, but something to keep in mind. If you want to research any of this stuff for me, you can. Uh, Parak. Um, I saw this pole top there, not really sure if it's true. Uh, Borneo, this tree feels very Borneo to me, like it's a kind of, kind of a pine, kind of feels higher altitude, probably found in Sabah. Um, this kind of poor stitching I saw in KL, another thing for research. Johor, don't really think that's necessarily Johor exclusive, but looking at that uh, taxi as well. Uh, this one I think actually might be the case. Johor exclusive red sticker above the black sticker. Seen that a few times. Think Johor is definitely the most confident send for there. Again, this one really kind of fake. Okay, here's uh, saved some good ones for last year. Saved some really good ones for last. Okay, first things first, we have single white line. I think single white line, I have seen it once in Peninsula. I think it's like 95, 90% in Borneo. So super useful. Uh, it doesn't shop that often, but uh, when it does, keep it in mind, great send. Um, also, we have this weed looking plant. <clears throat> Now, specifically, I'm talking about a, like, kind of a smaller looking weed, like a weed leaf with, like, five, uh, you know, um, leaves as part of the main leaf. Um, that, uh, what would you even say? One of the sub-leaf parts, I don't know. But those ones are really common, particularly Terengganu, and then Kelantan Pahang, so the three states you can mostly see on in the mainland, and then Sabah as well. So there are plenty of similar looking plants, but I can guarantee you that you dro just drop in. So I would say, here's what you gotta remember about the weird looking plant. It surrounds these mountains. So these mountains go down to here, like this mountain range here. It's kind of the more east mountain range. Uh, so like all here, um, and all the way up into Kelantan, up to here. So that's where you see like the range of this weird looking plant. No idea what it's called, but Steek and uh, me and Drew were in, in Discord and uh, Steek said, wait, hold up, we haven't we seen this a bunch here? And he was right, like it's actually really consistent. Click anywhere, like in these mountains and you see the weed plant here. Now this is probably like, this one I would say is less consistent, this kind of big leaf one, but can we see any of the small leaf? Yeah, this is the one I would trust more, kind of more of a yellowish color. Uh, again, they're kind of big, but like if you see like these smaller leafed ones, like I think these ones in the background, like yeah, okay, this one, 
these ones here, kind of small leafed ones, quite consistent, I would say. Um, even like, um, yeah, like this kind of small leaf stuff. You see how these ones are just kind of smaller? These ones are very consistently in that area. And then also in Saba, so keep that in mind. A silver bottom can be found all over the place. I think it's most common in Johor, so maybe you guys can help me research that. Um, uh, I would like a map made, but I'm kind of done with the research. I'm started full-time work, so I can't really do this research anymore. Urban Paraxin, as I said earlier, seems to have this sticker quite a lot. Don't know if I've seen it elsewhere. Again, could be something to send me if you see it. Um, these kind of really thin ro tree rows, also rubber trees are really common near the Thai border, so that's good. Uh, this is probably fake too. And then I have a bunch of other things for research, but uh, yeah, you can check out like an extensive breakdown of the car matters in a doc created by Eddie. He put some hours into that, so definitely worth the watch, I would say. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much it, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, yeah, took a lot of effort, obviously, like I would say, you know, well, look at it. it. It definitely took like, you know, probably in terms of man hours here, um, probably 50 plus hours. So, or maybe not quite that much. But yeah, it could be. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Give the video a like. Do subscribe to the second channel if you made it all the way. All the way if you made it all the way to the end, comment pancakes, bro, or something like that. Yeah, comment pancakes because then I know you're a real one. That, that's 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 some time commitment. But uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I hope you guys found this useful. Um, I think it was useful. I think it should be useful for you guys. Um, there's a lot of meta, and uh, it's a fairly unresearched country prior to this. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in a video soon. And, uh, yeah, no editing, so I'll see you guys later. Catch ya.